Hello, this is an introductory webcast on tutoring practices. I'm Clint Staley, uh, and uh, this is Eric Augustine, our present lead tutor in the Tutoring Center. What we're going to do is an example walkthrough of a tutoring session and try to illustrate a number of points that we want our tutors in the Tutoring Center to follow uh, when they're helping students out. Uh, these are correspondent to points that are made in a web page uh, that is available along with this webcast, so be sure you have a look at that web page in advance so you see what we're going to be illustrating. As we do this, Eric is going to play the befuddled student with a problem that we need to help him through with. I'll play the tutor, and we will periodically stop that play acting and talk to you directly about what we're doing so that uh, we can kind of go back and forth between the model tutoring session and a discussion with you about uh, correct approaches. So, without further ado. Okay. Here's the problem we're going to be handling. It's a typical 102. So, Eric will introduce the example and then we'll start our sample tutoring session. Okay. So here we have a very typical insert into a linked list. Uh, it's a very standard 101 or 102 problem. We have Element, we have an element and that has to be inserted as specified index. Um, you can assume that it's a typical link, a singly linked list. You can make standard assumptions such as the existence of a head reference. And there are four bugs in this code. Now take some time to try and find all four. And this uh, is an example of one of the points in the tutoring web page guide. Be sure you really understand what's wrong with the problem before you begin tutoring. It's easy sometimes to mess that up, um, and so getting it clear is step one. We're assuming you might have paused to think it through. Uh, coming back from such a pause, uh, be sure you see that the bugs in the code are... First, the student forgot to initialize current at head. It's obvious that current, they want to use current as a walkthrough, as a cursor, and they just forgot to initialize that as head. Second mistake, here we have an off by one error. The student, uh, the student needs to go one less to uh, insert at the correct position. It appears by their code down here that they want to use that they want to insert the element right after current. So this should be one less. Here they switch the order that they need to assign the references. Using this, they create a cycle in their loop. These should be swapped. And the final one is that they do not take care of the first case. They never take care of inserting at head when index is zero. Okay, so with those in mind, um, Eric, uh, you're coming to me for help, right? Okay. Tutor, I need some help. My linked list isn't working. Okay, so I've done step one, we assume, and I've examined it. What I'm going to do is take on one problem at a time. I'm not going to try and get him to solve all of them at once. And I'm thinking probably the first and easiest is to deal with the current equal head necessity, right? Now, one of the principles that is in the handout that you, or the webpage that you look at as well is, at all times, we're trying to get the student to do the work, not me. So an uh, important measure is how little I talk and how much the student does the work. That's important not only, obviously, for learning, but also for their confidence. If they can figure things out for themselves, they're going to feel more confident in future times. So both psychologically and intellectually, we're going to try and get Eric to do all the work possible. Uh, an important uh, concrete evidence of that is he's holding the pen, not me. And that in general should be true. Uh, your student should be doing the typing or, or the writing. Uh, you should be doing the guiding. Right? So Eric, um, let's see here. One of the first things I'd like you to do, please, is draw for me a picture of the list that you're trying to work with and so we can have a, a framework in which to discuss this. Oh. Uh -huh. And there aside is another important element. A lot of people go through programming, initial programming especially, without a clear visual image of what they're doing. And getting them to draw a clear, careful picture helps a lot. And at the very least gives you a framework for discussion. So, Eric, why don't you draw this linked list for me, please? Um, show me how it works. Okay. Well, I have some no or something, and it's a linked list. So it keeps going to the next one, and I think I have like, like a head somewhere, and that points to the top. Okay. And then on the side here, what we have is a less than perfect diagram. So we're going to refine the diagram first and foremost, and then we'll work with that from that point on. Okay, so Eric, um, first of all, 
how do these nodes work exactly? Um, you're showing them as just boxes here. Uh, is that all there is to them? Well, I guess, I guess not really. It has like two parts. Okay, let's draw those two parts so we can keep them clearly in mind. Well, like how my teacher usually does it. We got, we have this data, and we have something that's pointing to the next node. So I guess it's kind of like that in all of them. Mm -hmm. and this one, the next at the end, the next points to no. Okay. So it's like, no, nothing. By the way, I like to say it is null, not points to null, because it's oh. not pointing any place. You got it right. Good picture. Just a little phrasing thing there that helps. Oh, you're right, yeah. Okay. Now, why don't we label these as well with their names so that we know what each box is. You have the names right, but let's put something up there, at least for one of them, so we can keep track of that. Oh, well, this first part is this data, Okay. and this part is next. So, you're right, although data and next are boxes that contain something, right? Yeah. A data will contain an element of some kind. Yes. Maybe an integer as a concrete example. You won't want to have the name and the contents both in the same place. Oh, yeah. So keep the box empty so we can put things in there. Put the name next yeah. to it. It's like a, like a variable. Yeah. Right. Just like a variable. So we have like data, that part, next. Good. That part. And something similar here? Oh, that's right. because. My reference isn't, doesn't have the word head, it is called head. Yeah. So, and again, aside, we went through a good bit of exercise here to get the diagram just right. Also, by the way, I don't prefer to diagram it this way in my classes, but Eric said his instructor diagrams it that way, so we'll stick with what the instructor uses. That way, he's not confused with multiple different diagramming methods, as long as they're all um, good methods. That's the important criteria. Okay. That's cool. So now what we want to do is also do some diagramming for the other parts of the program here. Uh, this is the linked list we're going to work with. Uh -huh. And then what are the other variables we've got going here? And let's diagram that. Um, I made current, okay. and it's, it's a reference. So let's draw that up there. Like, I'll put it right here. Okay. Like that. And then you got another one? Yes, a uh, new node. That's the guy I want to put in the list. It's a, there's a node, and there's a reference, so I got two, I got a draw. That's, that's my new node, and I have, like that, and I like that. Okay. So there's a current situation. Now, I'd like you to walk through the code, step okay. at a time, and explain it to me. By the way, the model, explain it to me, changes mindsets. It's a useful way to look at things. Because when someone's explaining something, they're a lot more careful than when they're just going over it themselves. So, Eric, I'm a little baffled by this for loop here. Can you explain that to me? Um, the for loop? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I start at the beginning, and I got I, and it's just a counter. I don't really use it much. But I want to go until index, until the place I want to insert into. Okay. So then I just keep moving forward. Okay, so keep moving forward. Help me understand that a little more clearly. Oh, Is well, so current's like a reference to a node. So then I say current gets its own next, so it kind of hops forward okay. to the next node. So draw that for me and tell me what's um, going on there exactly in the diagram here. Show me how that will work the first time we go through the form. Okay. Well, first, current, I start at the beginning, so I just go there. Okay, now. Good. Yeah, and then I go... Like I do dot next, so then it points to the next one, like there. Okay. So let's wind back to where we were when we started the for loop now, uh, without the uh, arrows. That okay. Um, okay. Like. Okay. And the situation you have here is what's occurring when you begin the for loop, right? Well, I I start at the beginning. Sure. Like, like that. Now, that, where did that occur in your code? Well, when I first, oh, wait. Oh, I forgot. I forgot something. I have to start it at the beginning. OK, good. So there's your first bug file, right? Yes. OK. So now, what I want you to do is another walkthrough for me on this. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that index is a particular value. Let's say 2, for instance, right? OK. When you're done with this for loop, given the list you have here, where do you want current pointing if index is 2? Where would you expect it to point? 
I want to point to the node right before where I want to put it in because I want to say my current next is my new node. Okay, so where would that be here in this particular diagram? I'm assuming index is two. Um, index is two? Yeah. In fact, let me draw that up there so we can keep track. Okay. Just put index is two. Index is two. And, uh, is that consistent with the diagram in that we've done without the variables? Oh, sorry. We have index, that's a variable, inside it has the value of 2. Good. And then when that for loop's done, where do you want current to be pointing if index is equal to 2? Um, I want, the spec says that I have to make the new node be the index that I pass in. Okay. So where would it be here? So I have like 0, 2, so I want it to be number 2. Okay. So current has to be pointing to this one. Okay, so you're going to put it in here. Yes, okay. between these two nodes. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now, and I have to move along and help a few other people, I'll be back to you in about five minutes or so. Okay. I'd like you to set this up with the initial situation, with current um, equal head. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like you to walk through this for loop, step by step, assuming index is two. Don't assume it does what you have in mind. Walk through and see what it really does. Imagine I'm still here and you're explaining it to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be back in five minutes. Okay. Now, and aside, that's a common pattern as well. We want to be sure people have a chance to think on their own. And that's in the handout at uh, the web page that you're looking at as well. The advantage of this is several fold. First of all, you can have more than one person to help in a tutoring center. You need to be able to move around. And second of all, if they know you're coming back, they at least have the psychological support, so they're not feeling like they've been left out to drift. But at the same time, you're giving a direct message that they have to think for themselves and they can't expect you to feed them an answer. And even more importantly sometimes, they don't feel like they have to give you an answer right away. It can be a little nerve-wracking to have a tutor waiting for you and thinking, oh, I'm wasting this guy's time, I gotta come up with an answer. Better to be able to think on your own for a little while and know the tutor will come back, but they're not breathing down your neck right now, and so you can take it at your own pace. So, we've left for a while.